All right, boys, so I wanted to close up and show you uh, the track. So what I mean by overlapping it, okay? I'm gonna cut a piece like this, right? Six and three quarter back, because I'm putting six inch track with five eighths drywall. So I'm giving myself a little bit of room to play with. One stud will be a floater, and one stud will be the door stud. So you want to leave three and five eighths, okay? These little stubs, okay? You want an inch and a half for each stud, okay? So that's three inches, and then five eighths for the drywall that'll be in here. So three and five eighths is what, you know, we go three and three quarter, four inch, but uh, go tight is good. So I go three and five eighths, three and a half, depending on what kind of drywall we're using. But yeah, overlap. And then it's also important to uh, shoot all your wall studs in before you stud out your wall because then you can get your gun in nice and comfortable. All right, so do your perimeter, right? Shoot in your top track, bottom track, and your wall studs, okay? Um, and if they're if the wall studs are into drywall, then screw, you know, screw them off, but uh, make sure they're fastened before you start studding out the wall so you have good access to it. Right on. All right guys, too, when I'm doing my layout, I'm gonna be coming from the inside of this track. So um, I can make sure when I put a sheet in, it's gonna land on a stud. So I come right out to 48, make sure a full sheet will land, and then it's a cut in, right? So I'll mark these centers, right? 16, 32, 48. But I wanted to show you this. I go from the inside of the track out because I do the inside first when drywalling. The outside you're going to run further in, uh, to have a because um, you don't want to bevel on the outside corner, right? So, and you want to also stagger your sheets from inside and outside. But a bevel can land in here, no problem. And then you'll lock in, lock in this floater stud uh, when the time comes. I'll also show you when we're laying out. A wall like this okay we're gonna come from this outside wall right but our center is going to be a quarter inch off of that because the, the drywall has to land So, uh, the drywall, so the drywall has to land, or uh, has to be a quarter inch off of that uh, concrete, right? So we're gonna come in uh, 16 quarter, but because of the header here, we're just gonna mark 48 quarter, you know, 64 quarter, 80 quarter, you know, so on, right? I know we're using the framing tool as well, so we don't really need to mark centers, but I wanted to show you guys uh, how to do the layout. Notice too how we cut the corners, uh, the track on in the corners. This wall is running in to the small, uh, to the small piece. So the, we o we overlap it, so there's more strength. It's not just a little tiny piece of steel. It actually runs to the back side of the adjacent wall here. So you got a nice solid corner. See what I mean? So this is where that that wall ends and you got a nice solid corner there. So on a six inch wall with five eighths drywall, come back six and three quarter inches back from the in and cut and cut so that uh, the track can run in. Yeah, mine, so yeah, it's all nice and tight. Um, ready for the doors. I wish we were putting the doors in. It's so much easier to put the doors in when you're framing, but so yeah, they got to do concrete here, but I still put my wall in, no big deal. They'll just pour under it. You can kind of see how it's forming now, right? So with the top track, it's all different, right? Like it heights and stuff, so it's a little crazy. Uh, it's hard to use that multi, that uh, framing tool on the tops like this, but along the bottom is good, right? See here, there's no uh, there's no room for studs, but yeah, I just put the track there. That's where the header goes. It's perfectly level, so all the studs are plumb. <clears throat> but you can see uh, how the how it finishes when I'm doing the layout. 
right? It just finishes five eighths behind the wall here. So the, the board finishes flush. And that's how I did, do, did my layout. So, and then yeah, squared it out this way. And uh, simple as that, man. Okay, good. So uh, this side is complete. So I'll recap. Okay, we always put the top track on first, shoot it on, uh, then the bottom track, because we can uh, snap both sides of the line so you can lay out your doors and your corners. Uh, the ends where the door is small like this come in like three and a half inches so you can push the stud in for one when you're drywalling it, it'll be able to slip in and then push back and it gives you a little more room instead of just the three inches for the two studs come in three and a half three and five eighths and you're good to go there uh, you can even come in four inches if you want but we don't typically do that so yeah we use the framing tool uh, all we did was set the first 16 first stud uh, screwed it in, squared it off, screwed it in, and then we used the Tzizi framing tool to frame in the rest. Um, the doors, like I said, right, we picked the low side, uh, we set the header at uh, 82 half, the door's 82, right, so simple as that. Simple, simple, leave this one not unscrewed, because it is a floater stud, it'll, it'll screw in, the drywall will slip in here, and then it'll be screwed in through this way, locked in. Let's that, man. But uh, yeah, so you gotta plumb up a stud and every time it changes height and the elevations, you gotta laser, laser up a new uh, mark and then you can measure across for your centers. But yeah, it's kind of a pain in the butt, this kind of framing, but that's uh, a good example. to show you guys some things. I just wanted to show you guys when a center uh, lands somewhere funky you can always put a header in and add the stud it's especially important to do this when the stud is landing on a, a bevel joint where you want the drywall to end not so much here but uh, just because of the screwed up top there I had to come down but I also put backing in up there for the drywall um, but yeah you can see this is a big header for a double door and um, yeah, so you guys, the corners are in, like I was saying, these are the floater studs, right? These ones are left loose because the drywall will go straight into the back of the track here, or a quarter inch in, right? And then this stud will go up tight to the, to the drywall and then you screw through this way to lock the stud in. That's why you start with the insides of the rooms first, right? So you get all the studs locked. Um, so yeah, leave three quarters of an inch there for the drywall to go in and um, you'll be laughing uh, for five eighths drywall, uh, even half inch, whatever, it's still three quarters is nothing. So, but uh, yeah, you can see you square it all across, screw it all in. 
Um, yeah, see a stud that, uh, landed here on the on the angle, so I just added a piece of track and ran the stud. Um, yeah, wherever a 16 is supposed to land, try to get a stud in there. And this one here, for example, I just moved over because it wasn't an important one. There's no, I wasn't planning for any bevels to land. Otherwise, I would have uh, headed like added another header and put the stud where it goes. So, but you know, with this down here and all that, well, it is what it is. So, I can't do this wall because, of course, this run is right in the middle of where the wall is supposed to go. So I don't know what they want to do there. Um, but yeah, you can see it's like directly above the wall. It's right in it. So I don't, I, I have to wait to see what happens, what they say about that uh, before I can finish. But the pruner is done anyway. So these take a long time, man. All these studs are, almost all of them are different sizes, okay? Like because of all the different slopes and heights, um, they're, almost every stud is a different size. So you have to layer studs out, top and bottom, and then measure every one. So it takes time. It takes a long time. So, uh, but yeah, I wanted to get, get you guys some footage to show you what I mean, and yeah. Post some pictures on the gram so other people know that we're more than friends. And ever since you came around, I've never been sober, always in my head. Met you at a time when I was so low, went from just talking to taking you. You won't let me go